All right, everybody's just gonna go ahead and go over a couple things on the Volkswagen uh, air conditioning system. And maybe you've got a one you're trying to fix. Maybe you don't know a lot of things about it. I'm just gonna kind of go over a few things. I made a video maybe about five years ago and it wasn't, I didn't cover some things I'm gonna cover in this one. So anyway, this one has factory air conditioning brackets and had factory air conditioning and there was two different types there was the dealer ad and there was a factory air conditioning if you have factory air conditioning um, you're going to have this is a sanden compressor it looks like this uh, it's kind of got a round back end the hoses kind of go up in an angle come up this way and this is the way it was put on was a was a cast iron bracket so they have behind here a cast iron bracket that goes through and kind of comes up to the alternator so right here where the alternator is there's a cast iron bracket that goes all the way up to that and then uh it kind of goes around and is bolted to the uh to the what is that the water pump i guess the water pump housing that bolts to the engine because the water pump itself is just a little flat thing right and then there's a housing that's bolted to the engine so it kind of bolts to that so that's how they were put in uh, a lot of them came with dealer add-on air and the dealer add-on air had a yorks compressor so you can kind of look up if you want to if you don't know what that is you can look up a yorks compressor uh, they were like a big square looking thing and sometimes they would put them on top Okay, so sometimes you'll see the dealer ad air conditioning or the aftermarket air conditioning that they put in them with the York's compressor. And that was not the original one. And those were always a real pain because they had like a, a steel bracket and it seemed like it interfered with different bolts and stuff like that. So they were really a pain to work on with the York's compressor. So if you can, if you're trying to, uh, trying to keep, the, make the car, you know, with air conditioning try and find a original bracket so the diesel one was different the, the AC bracket than the gas engine so if you have a diesel you need to find a diesel uh, air conditioning bracket if you have a gas engine you need to find the, the, uh, the air conditioning bracket for a gas engine and I honestly I don't think you're gonna want to try and make that because it's it's pretty involved it's there's a it's they made it out of cast iron and I tried to take a one time I tried to take a uh, a, a gas engine one and convert it into a diesel one and it doesn't work so it's really you need the correct one so they're, they're kind of hard to find a lot of guys want a lot of money for them uh, so if you're trying to put AC in your car um, and maybe you've got the unit but you just don't have the brackets because a lot of guys took them off and they would put because if you see here you can't just take the AC compressor off and have just your alternator you have to have either the air conditioning bracket and the and the pump on there to be able to have an alternator if somebody converts it so they disconnected them a lot of times so they'll get the old AC bracket from or the without AC which was basically a smaller bracket that uh, put the alternator down where the down here in the bottom and sometimes they would have an extended pulley okay out further like this and uh, sometimes they didn't so along with the bracket you're gonna need the uh, the pulley for the engine as well the pole pulley system because they are slightly different and they have two different uh, so I think the diesel had the large if you look here, well, I can get you guys up in there so you can see. But they have the large flange on the water pump. And the gas engine had the small one, I believe. So there's two different sizes. There's like a 30 millimeter and a 30, 32. I, I can't remember the sizes. I know one's 30. So maybe it was 26, smaller. I think it was 26 and this is the 30 or something like that. I don't remember the size so they were just they were different sizes smaller and big 
So let's look at the air conditioning system inside. I'll explain where everything's at on that too. So factory ad air conditioning, or factory air conditioning was kind of an afterthought with them, with Volkswagen. So inside, I don't have the factory fuse, fuse block in mind anymore. I had to rewire it. Uh, you guys that have one of these, you'll probably be doing the same thing if it's a 1980 or earlier. Um, the old fuse block would have issues and the fuse blocks started getting bad connections inside of them so when they do that what would happen is you'd have random things that sometimes things would work sometimes they didn't and you think it was a loose wire but it wasn't a loose wire it's actually inside the fuse block would bad connections would happen inside of them so we used to be years ago back when these cars were fairly new we used to have those in stock because what would happen is the windshield would leak and the windshield, which was a real common thing, you guys, uh, the windshield would leak and it would go inside down the dash and it would uh, contaminate the fuse block and also the grounding clusters. So the, you know, these are all normal Volkswagen issues. So if you look at your fuse block to the right of it, okay, uh, and I believe it kind of mounts to it, it has like a little add-on bracket, is your AC relay. So your AC relay is added off to the side, and so is your, I believe your, um, if you have a diesel, you have your glow plug relay also added off to the side. They're not connected. They don't plug into the, um, into the, 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 normally most of them plug in. Okay, these ones are added onto the side. So if your car was diesel, they would add the diesel wiring harness so they could make it easier for manufacturing. And same thing with the AC. So it's off to the side, and there's a hot wire that comes from the back of the relay pigtail and goes to one of the hot wires. Uh, you have these large connector, slip-on connectors. They're really large, and one of those hot wires will go from there to the relay. So that's how it powers up. Um, so if you look at your, this right here, uh, let's see, I've done this almost with the dash out. This right here, this whole thing right here is your AC and heat system. It's your HVAC. And if you look up in here, there's a wiring harness that comes out of there. Um, the wiring harness comes out, I think it's an eight pin. It only uses, I think, seven of the eight pins, if I remember correctly. Uh, but there's an 8-pin relay, I think, coming out of our 8-pin connector. It connects up to another connector right behind the dash right here. So you can take this out and through the, there's a metal bracket inside there. Through that metal bracket, that wiring harness goes through and uh, those connect together. And then that wiring harness goes all the way over to your relay. So one of the things unique on the Volkswagen is um, you have... Uh, your, your, that box in there has your heater core and your, your, uh, evaporator inside there. And so this right here is the, uh, on off switch. Basically when you move the temperature on your thing and you take it over to heat, it opens this up and the uh, evaporator, it goes through the evaporator and through the heater core and then out through your ducts. So if this doesn't work properly and is not closing, then what can happen is your, uh, your, your, hot, your air won't be cold. So if, so if you get all done, you reach under here, you know, with this thing out, it's a whole lot easier to work on. Um, if you reach under here and you feel your pipes and they're cold, okay, but hot air is coming out of here, and that tells you that that valve either is bad or that valve is not shut off properly or the cable's bad. Like I had an issue just today. I was driving this and it was starting to put warm air out of the vents. So I just checked it just now and that valve was partially open. So if that valve's open, it's gonna bring hot water into the heater core, 
which is stacked right behind the the uh, evaporator and you'll get hot air coming through your vents even if it's even if your compressor is working and it's getting cold and everything else one of the things kind of unique on these um if you've got a small if you got a 1.6 diesel and you're going to have your air conditioning working it's not going to have any power just so you know you're going to be driving around super slow uh, but you know hey sometimes having cold air is more important than having power if you want to fix that the best thing to do is just get the 1.9 find the find a 1.9980 aaz and either put a turbo on it or um, put one of those in here and it'll run great you know it just totally changes the game so if you look here on this you see how this is it has the little cold as you get colder and colder and colder and you go back to zero and then you go over here to heat okay if you put it in the middle there so if you put it over just a little bit there is and you don't run it like all the way over here okay there's actually a thermostat a uh, I'm gonna say it's it's actually a pressure controlled thermostat a little it's like a little tube that comes up here and that thing needs to be there and working okay it, sometimes they get broken and I think you could probably pinch it off or something and maybe solder it up if you had to and it would still operate but um, how it works is this thing here this temperature control right here if if it's all the way over it will just keep uh, the compressor will just keep running like your normal once it gets running it builds up if it builds up too much pressure it'll shut off or uh, I don't know if it has a a low pressure switch or a high pressure switch either one of those I don't know how that operates I don't remember but either they have one or two of those but what happens is um, if the pressure is normalized um, uh, it, it will just keep running like a normal compressor but if you have it say right here okay that thermostat when that thermostat reaches uh, uh, the temperature desired you know whatever that temperature is I don't know let's say it's 75 degrees um, it will automatically cycle the clutch on the other so it's pretty unique and so it was really built efficiently uh, that's something that was kind of unheard of at the time nobody was really doing that and of course they carried that on till now to the TDIs the TDIs have a um, a variable pressure switch on them so that they uh, so as they they're constantly changing the pressure of the AC system to be more efficient uh, and it doesn't even have a clutch so they kind of this was their first attempt at that so it's kind of neat this little switch here uh, this there's a temperature switch behind in here you'll see it if you take it off there's a wire to it and stuff it actually regulates uh, if you so if it's right here it'll turn off automatically turn back on it'll cycle to keep to maintain that temperature and again it all goes through the relay and then there's basically one power wire to the relay so again it's a typical AC power wire one power wire to it and a ground out here so everything else is basically the same as any other AC system um, if you look at your hoses a couple things you could do to kind of eliminate having to buy a bunch of stuff because you may not find these hoses if you find them if you can't if they're bad you could probably cut these off and, and get I, I i've done that before i've cut these off on them and actually replaced the new hose on here and then put a instead of putting a swedge on they have a heavy duty high pressure clamp you can buy um, that's for ac systems and replace the rubber part of the hose. What I do typically is I'll look at them and I'll see if there's any oil leakage because if there's oil leakage, then it tells me that, you know, Freon is thinner than oil, right? It's a gas. Well, it's a liquid that turns into a gas, but um, it becomes a gas as it leaks out. So it's gonna be uh, less, more prone to leak than oil. All right, so if you see a little oil on the edges of your hoses, then you know probably that hose is bad. You could just replace those and keep the ends of them because you're probably not going to find the same 
hose that goes in there. This AC system does not have a expansion tube. It has an expansion valve. You can see there I've had to replace mine. Uh, they are available and they're not too expensive right now. So expansion valve is under there. And then the evaporator is probably not available to buy. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I'm, I think I've seen them, but um, very rarely do they go bad. The evaporator is usually fine. The condenser in front of the radiator, typically, if it's bad, you can change it with a universal. Um, you can probably get something universal that will fit in there that will do the job. And uh, so one of the things also, the fan turns on as soon as you turn on the air conditioning. It's on the same uh, switch. It's again, it, the, the one relay controls everything. So they had a, a bunch of different connectors on there and it turns the fan on. Um, and one of the things I would recommend doing is they do have a dual fan, aftermarket dual fan set up on eBay you can get. Um, I would highly recommend that. I, I would change this if I was gonna keep the car, I would probably change it to that. So anyway. Uh, I would highly recommend that because more air going through the uh, radiator and the uh, condenser or condenser at the same time is going to give you a lot cooler air inside. So in these old fans like this one here were not very efficient and the new ones with all the blades on them uh, and uh, brushless motors and stuff like that are much better. So. Uh, I would highly recommend and you have a little more space to work on things too because it gets rid of this giant motor sticking out So you have a little more space in there uh, So anyway, that's a little about the AC system if you're just wondering uh, Again, if you have one that has different looking hoses and you have the Yorks compressor They do work uh, And if you want to you can change from the Yorks compressor to a sand den or any other compressor that you'd like to put in there and have fit. Uh, as long as it doesn't have a variable pressure switch on it. Uh, if it has a variable pressure switch, I believe you can actually uh, energize those open all the time and they will work as long as it has a clutch. If it just has a variable pressure switch on it, like if you put a, a, a M, uh, no, let's see, MK5 engine in it, uh, TDI, you're probably that's probably going to be difficult to make work because it's all done with a variable pressure switch and there's no clutch on those. So these ones have a regular clutch, okay. And if you had a variable pressure switch and a clutch, you could probably just wire the, you know, energize the variable uh, pressure switch open, and then have that uh, have you run on just the clutch itself and have the clutch uh, cycle just like normal AC system. So anyway, that's kind of how it works. Uh, and that's how the factory AC was. Again, if you had one and you've seen it has Yorks, it wasn't a factory AC. It was a dealer ad. They use the same, as far as I know, they use the same part inside the car. Um, but they would use a different AC compressor, whatever the local supplier gave them. And that's how they did it. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. I hope that helps you if you're looking to fix your AC system. Uh, I'll talk to you later on the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe.